So I really rather liked OnePlus's iPad rival, which it launched last year, the imaginatively titled OnePlus Pad. But if you can't quite stretch to the OnePlus Pad, well, they've just released a more budget-friendly version here in the UK, the OnePlus Pad Go, which will cost you almost 100 quid less than the regular tablet. You'll certainly get quite a few six packs of Stella for that. But to slash the price, OnePlus has also had to slash the specs a bit. So the OnePlus Pad Go makes quite a few sacrifices, including to the performance and to that gorgeous screen tech. And we tested out the OnePlus Pad Go for about a week now, so here's my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So let's start with the design. And I've got to say, the OnePlus Pad Go doesn't look or feel like a cheapy, crappy tablet. And this Go model is a wee bit more compact than the original OnePlus Pad at 11.3 inches. Once again, weighs just over half a kilo. And those bezels surrounding that display are pretty much the perfect size. Not too chunky, but just about thick enough so you can comfortably grip this tablet. It's not quite compact enough to wrap your entire hand around the back, not unless you've got hands like Andre the Friggin Giant. And the majority of that frame is once again metal, although this time around for the OnePlus Pad Go, you've got a jazzier two-tone effect with what appears to be a glossy plastic strip up top here. Unfortunately, this does get very, very smudgy indeed. It's an absolute muck magnet. All the grime and dust and dirt and filth just instantly attracted to this thing. So you'll constantly be wiping it down unless you obviously just do not give a shit. Thankfully, the frosted metal bit of the frame does a pretty good job of repelling all those fingerprints and other bits of grimness. And like the original OnePlus Pad tablet, you've got a single colour option with the Go model, and that's this here, Twin Mint Effort. Now, somewhat surprisingly, the OnePlus Pad Go comes with OxygenOS 13.2 on it, slapped on top of Android 13. You don't get the latest, freshest Android 14 action here. And when you consider that Android 15 is already in beta, that's pretty slack from OnePlus, really. Though they are promising a couple of years of OS and Android updates. Just Christ knows when they'll actually come. Like the original OnePlus Pad, there's no fingerprint sensor built into the display or the power button or anything. So you are basically relying on face unlock, which thankfully is nice and nippy and reliable as well. As you can see there, you're basically straight in. You can set it so your eyes have to be open for face and lock to work, though still not as secure as the likes of a fingerprint sensor. And on the OnePlus Pad Go, the software experience essentially the exact same as what you'll get on the regular OnePlus Pad. All of the best Oxygen OS bits are still in there, including, of course, the good old shelf. Still not optimised for tablet displays, but packed to the tits with helpful widgets means you don't have to have them cluttered all over your desktops. You got your wee drag out thingy, the sidebar or whatever it's called. And the storage is a wee bit miserly. OnePlus is offering up to 128 gigs of the stuff, so not much at all. But in better news, you can actually slip in micro SD memory cards up to a terabyte in size using this handy wee slot up top. And multitasking and everything works in basically the same way. Again, you've got this dock which is permanently housed down at the bottom of the screen. On the right side, you've got your most recently used apps. You can quickly skip back into those if you want to. And the rest of the dock can be fully customised. You can stick in your favourite apps there for fast access. It's just a case of drag and drop, nice and easy. When you're actually in an app, you can pop up the dock just by long pressing down here at the bottom edge of the screen. If you want to get some split screening on the go, just drag another app in like so, and you can quickly and easily resize the windows. And you can also change up which apps are displayed with a quick tap at this little bar up here. So let's get the Play Store on the go, for example. You could also get a full-on threesome on the go by dragging to the middle-ish here and letting go, and then you've got a bit of floating window action. And if you've got yourself a OnePlus smartphone where well, you've got the same seamless sharing for your files and apps and such forth, but unfortunately the OnePlus Pad Go does not support that keyboard or the stylus from the original OnePlus Pad. And that is a massive shame because the keyboard especially I found really, really helpful on the OnePlus Pad. Basically just turned this thing into a mini laptop. Really good for smashing out a quick bit of work or, you know, replying to emails or whatever on the go. And OnePlus has also made some sacrifices when it comes to the display text. So you've got an 11.3 inch LCD panel here, slightly smaller than the regular OnePlus Pad. It's not quite as crispy. The 2408 by 1720 pixel resolution, so that's 260 pixels per inch. But yeah, it's still good enough for editing photos on the fly. Your movies will still look good. It is once again a rather square aspect ratio, quite a wide display, so well suited to the likes of web browsing. Although if you are relaxing with a movie, you will get some pretty chunky letterboxing on the go. 
And while the contrast is fairly respectable for an LCD panel, there's no HDR support in the likes of Netflix and other streaming services. And I did find that the OnePlus Pad Go's display is rather on the warm side as well, to the point where I kept thinking that the iComfort mode had accidentally been activated. I made sure that was all turned off. I've actually gone into the screen colour mode and I've bumped it all the way down into the cooler end because as you see on default mode, it's quite a red hue. Especially if you leave it in the default vivid mode, if you bump it to natural, that sort of cools things down a bit. Yeah, certainly seems to take that blue light filter into the next level. And the brightness of the OnePlus Pad Go screen also not quite as powerful as what you get on the original OnePlus Pad. Max is out at around 400 nits. So certainly if there's any glare in the room, you'll struggle to see what's going on when watching Murky Affair. And even just browsing the web or replying to emails or whatever is a bit tricky at times when you're outdoors, got a bit of glare reflecting off that glossy surface. And the refresh rate has also been scaled back a wee bit from 144Hz to 90Hz, but the display still seems pretty fluid when you're just zipping around in Oxygen OS or whatever. And the OnePlus Pad Go once again boasts a quad speaker setup. We've got a bit of Dolby Amos action built in as well. And when you boost up that volume, it's certainly plenty powerful. Let's give it a go. Checking out Huawei's latest tech, as well as knocking back enough Sing Tao to drown a hippo. And eating so much sweet and sour that my shits would have probably exploded a Geiger counter. So yeah, it really doesn't matter how raucous your household is, even with lots of kids in the background doing their level best to absolutely destroy your eardrums, you should still be able to comfortably hear your bit of Netflix, bit of YouTube action, whatever. And you got the usual Aptex, LDAC, etc. support when you are streaming over Bluetooth to a speaker or a pair of headphones, which you will have to do if you want a bit of privacy by the way, because there's no headphone jack, unfortunately, anywhere on this tablet. See the Type-C dongly action all the way, otherwise, yeah, wireless streaming. And on the front end of the OnePlus Pad Go, you've got yourself an 8 megapixel selfie camera, same as the regular OnePlus Pad tablet. And it's once again centrally positioned as well when you're holding the tablet in landscape mode. So really good for your video chats and such forth. Actually looks like you're vaguely staring at that camera lens. It captures you at Full HD, 1080p, at up to 30 frames per second. And the image quality is okay, you know, again, perfectly fine for those video chats. There's bugger all stabilization, of course, so got to keep your hands reasonably still while you're holding the tablet. And the built-in mics do an okay job of uh, picking up your voice. I did find that if I strayed a little bit from the tablet, I put it down and walked a few feet away, then people generally couldn't hear me very well, so you do have to be up close and personal to use those. And yes, you do once again have a camera slapped on the back end of the OnePlus Pad Go, which I still don't really know why. If you're using a tablet to take photos or shoot video, then frankly, you're a bit of a random man. And as for performance, well, running the show here on the OnePlus Pad Go is MediaTek's Helio G99 chipset. It's a good couple of years old now, and adjectives you certainly wouldn't throw at it would be the likes of beefy, powerful, trouser rousing. There's the Geekbench scores if you care about any of that. And you know, the performance is absolutely fine. Occasionally you will see some lag here and there when you go to open an app or do some split screening or something. But absolutely nothing too troublesome. And yeah, if you are a gamer, you probably want to upgrade to a different tablet because you, know, you can play a basic bit of PUBG or Call of Duty or something like that on here. Certainly don't expect to be running, you know, Genshin Impact on high detail settings or anything. Although having said that, Oxygen OS still boasts that rather nifty gaming mode. Just give you a bit of a helping hand by boosting that performance when needed, blocking notifications, tweaking the screen sensitivity, etc. And given the dinkier dimensions of the OnePlus Pad Go compared with the original OnePlus Pad tablet, it's no real shock that the battery capacity is also slightly shrunk, although only to 8,000 milliamp hours, so not too bad. And the rather splendid news is that I actually found the battery life is slightly better here on the OnePlus Pad Go, probably because of the more energy efficient MediaTek Helio chipset that's stuffed inside. So if you're streaming video, you'll get a solid 13 to 14-ish hours of playback, no worries. And a full charge will easily last you a day, whatever you're up to. So certainly well suited to those long trips for keeping the kids occupied on a plane for 12 friggin' hours or whatever. Sadly, however, you do lose the fast charging capabilities of the regular OnePlus pad, so you've got 33 watt charging here. So we'll need to bung a cable in it for well over an hour in order to get a full charge again. 
And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a tasty wee nutshell is what I reckon of the OnePlus Pad Go after using it for just over a week. And yeah, that price is easier to swallow now, but you've just got so many sacrifices here compared with the original tablet, which I really, really liked. Performance has taken a real knock. That display tech certainly isn't as eye-pleasing. And the fact that you no longer have support for that keyboard and stylus is a real bummer as well. Anywho, that is what I reckon. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the OnePlus Pad Go down below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.